Jesus Christ is risen. Here we are, Easter Sunday. Now if we cast our minds back to Friday, it's fair to assume that the disciples would have been in a pretty dark place. The one they'd followed and called the Messiah became a collapsed figure on the cross. Jesus executed and dies a dishonorable man must have felt like a complete disaster. Jesus had told the disciples that he'd be betrayed and that he'd suffer, but his warnings and foretelling were always met with denial and incomprehension. So to today, it was still dark when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been rolled away and she fled back and reported to Simon Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved. She reported back her thesis. Jesus had been taken and now she doesn't know where he is. So the two disciples, Simon Peter and the one he loved, took off running. The disciple Jesus loved arrived first and looks in the tomb to find the linen wrappings lying there. The cloth that had been on Jesus' head was rolled up in a place by itself. Peter went in, saw and believed. But I guess we initially have to ask, believed what? Because they both just go home. Sat here in the after event, that just seems bizarre. For us, empty tomb equals resurrection. Come on guys, what are you doing? It's Easter. You can't just go home as if nothing's happened. But that's what they do. No fanfare or proclamation. And I wondered, maybe that's what we'd do too. Anywho, Mary remained at the tomb, weeping. She decides to take a peek and encounters two angels in white. They ask her why she's weeping. Again, I'm sorry, but I find this all a bit strange. Mary's not startled or afraid, not even a tad perplexed. Rather, without seemingly batting an eyelid, she once again puts forward her thesis. Someone's taken Jesus and she doesn't know where he is. As she turns, she sees Jesus, or what she thought was a gardener. He repeats the question asked by the angels, addressing her as woman. Then he speaks her name, and she knows. He tells her not to hold on to him, because, because he hasn't yet ascended, and then he sends her to proclaim the good news. And that's exactly what she does. There is very little in the way of reaction and emotion other than the weeping. It's all a bit of a strange happening. And the reality is that no one actually knows what happened between Good Friday and Easter morning. Mary initially edged towards body snatching, which wasn't uncommon in that time. N.T. Wright cites Barbara Thiering's proposal that Jesus didn't actually die. Thing is, we don't like mystery. And that's exactly what this is. We can't say exactly what went on in that tomb. Other than, the tomb could not contain Christ or his love. As we celebrate Easter, what we do, have to do, is be prepared to enter into the heart of the Easter event, to dare to find ourselves as part of the tomb encounter. Because it's only if we're prepared to go there, to begin to question how we understand the resurrection that we can begin to consider how we're going to witness the resurrection in our own lives, in the here and now. How do we share it? Because in accepting the role of disciples, this is exactly what we're called to do. 
Bottom line is, is that the Easter event is mind-blowing. It's unintelligible and impossible. As we explore our understanding, the one thing we can't escape is the fact that something significant and world-shattering happened. Something that would change the course of the world took place. Easter Sunday is not just any old Sunday. It's the first day of a new creation. A new way of being in the world has burst into life. Let's just begin with the fact that all the gospel accounts report the significance of women as the first witnesses. Now, we might, may not really take much notice of this, but it's hardly likely to have been a fictional invention or an addition because women held no status. And particularly in this time or culture, back in the first century, there is no way anyone would want to detract from the prestige of the male disciples. So right here at the empty tomb, I like to see it as the original birth of gender equality. Anywho, the stone was rolled away. Barriers were shattered. This open, dark tomb becomes the doorway through which light, liberation, freedom and love entered the world on a whole new level. Transformation has begun. Jesus' life and ministry turned the world's norms upside down. And now, right here at the resurrection, it continues. There's an opening for new possibilities continued transformation and flourishing in the world. In the strangeness and mystery of the resurrection, we're invited to think differently. We're invited to continue on with the work of Christ in the world, liberating all who have felt trapped in the tomb of oppression, exploitation, discrimination. Remember, Jesus could have compromised his message. He could have watered down his radical ways of being in community, in the world. But he refused. He was committed to the values and the vision of the kingdom of God, a completely new economy. And as Bill Loder puts it, he chose to go to the heart of the religious and political establishment with his message. As we claim our place as Easter people, we too are to commit to and not compromise this radical new way of being, this new economy that has love as its foundation. As disciples of Christ, we're called to work for liberation and freedom, to call for alternatives to violence, to love our neighbor, to do no harm, and to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. We're called to be love in the world. All of this said, we do celebrate this Easter in a way vastly different to ever before. We're probably thinking we're finding ourselves less than liberated in many ways. As we watch sermons online, hey, Church hopping has never been easier. We can spend our time this Easter in our homes, believing there's very little we can do. You know, Netflix is running hot. Maybe we could take in a good Easter epic. We can procrastinate a little and decide tea or coffee, or is it appropriate to have that glass of wine yet? But there is an alternative we can still participate in the liberating work of Christ. We can pick up the phone. We can call someone and let them know they're loved. We can hold on to the hope that we're offered in Christ and know that the stones that are currently over our doorways will open and we will emerge. We can use this time to think about what transformations we want to work towards bringing about when we do emerge. You know, one thing I thought of is, 
You know, if we generally walk past the homeless in the street, perhaps because we've become to believe a particular narrative about homelessness, perhaps after our time of isolation and we emerge, we'll realize that engaging with a person's humanity is liberating. And perhaps we'll even be liberated from breaking free from the old narratives that we hold. Easter is the celebration of a new world. A new world where creative love changes what is hateful and deserving of hurt. It's about the hope of a new way of being. It's about reconciliation. It's about finding love, grace, justice and peace in the unexpected. And it's a challenge, particularly at the minute. But hang in there because Jesus is risen and we are an Easter people. Let's pray. Our prayers of the people come from Peter Bairdon this week. Gracious God, in this unsettling time of upheaval and anxiety arising from the spread of the COVID-19 virus, we praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of the resurrection of your son. We praise you that the resurrection gives us new life and renewed hope. We praise you that you give to us today the light of new life made possible through Jesus. Through your Holy Spirit, teach us to live in the certain knowledge of your great mercy and love. To know that the Easter light of life hope and joy can live in each day and that we are empowered to bring that light of life, hope and joy into the lives of others. Resurrection Lord, help us to choose your love and meet the challenge to live in it and share it. To choose and share hope, even in moments of great darkness. To choose faith accepting you as our Lord and God. To choose to take hold of your strength and power ever more deeply in our lives. Lord God, as your people everywhere confront the spread of COVID-19, we pray that you will guide, bless, encourage and support all healthcare workers who jeopardize their own and their family's health and safety to confront sickness and disease. Enable them to relieve suffering and assist in the healing process. Bless and strengthen them as they work in stressful, anxious and sometimes threatening situations. Help them know that your love surrounds them. Encourage the families of healthcare workers as they support them in their work. Guide researchers as they seek to gain a greater understanding of our world and strive to develop vaccines and treatments which will reduce suffering and death. Provide comfort to all in moments of loss or setback and grant them your peace that goes beyond human understanding. As we pray this ancient Celtic prayer and blessing, Remind us that we follow in the footsteps of earlier generations of your people who faced pandemics in the certainty that your love surrounds us and trusted in your power of renewal. Lord, you are the peace of all things calm. You are the place to hide from harm. You are the light that shines in dark. You are the heart's eternal spark. You are the door that's open wide. You are the guest who waits inside. You are my Lord and with me still. You are the light, the truth, the way. You are my saviour this very day. Amen. As we continue to stay at home, let's do so as Easter people, 
with words and actions of love and liberation, preparing for the day that we too will emerge to join the dance of life in the world, ready to join in once more with the work of the risen Christ. And may the blessing of God, the Creator, surround us like the blue of the sky. May the blessing of the risen Christ lift up the life of the world. And may the blessing of the Holy Spirit dance with us in the dance of life. Amen. Amen.